Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this video today I'm going to try and answer the question, something I'm asked quite often is what are printer profiles? ICC profiles, paper profiles, um, describe various ways. Now, I am most definitely not going to go into the technical areas of colour management. So if you know colour management, you make your own profiles and that, you might want to gloss over this because this is pretty basic stuff that you should know if you're making your own profiles. Now. I'll start off with a, an overview of just what they are, what profiles do, but I'll come back towards the end of the video a look at soft proofing, which is something I know that a lot of people have difficulty with. Uh, once again, I'm not going to go into the details of how to do it, but why you do it and what's actually going on so that hopefully it makes a bit more sense to you. Anyway, printer profiles, what are they? Well, at the simplest, they are nothing more than a little file of data that lives on your computer. You install them on the computer. Uh, they have specific places where they go on Macs, specific places where they go on PCs. Um, I'll put a note in the in the notes to this that actually goes into that bit a bit more bit more detail. But as I said, I, I'm going to try and keep away from too much technical detail in this and system stuff. The, what you really need to know about them is that. The software, whether it be the operating system or the editing software or the printer driver, they make use of these data files and they do stuff. All you have to do is usually just select one to use and it gets used. You don't need to know what's inside them or what they do. It does help though if you understand a little bit of why they're doing what they're doing and it may make a bit more sense. Now, they're all about matching colours, about getting good looking colour on prints. Now there are some people who might say it's about getting correct colour. That's a bit more difficult uh, because colour is perceived in different ways by different people. There are ways where if you're in commercial printing where you want particular types of colours produced accurately. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the use of it typically for photographers where you want to make prints and you want the prints to look good. Nothing you know too difficult about that. Now, the actual software themselves, the actual little files, think of them as translation tables. Now, these, the profile is specific to a printer, and this is an Epson 8500 I'm testing currently, and a paper. So you'll need a profile specific to the printer you're using and to the paper you're using. They, they, are, they are matched together. You create them by producing profiling targets like this, running them through some measurement equipment. I've got videos about this stuff and producing the profiles. Now, the idea is that the profile for, let's say, this matte card here is going to be different to the profile for this luster finish paper, uh, even though they're on the same printer. Now, some manufacturers will supply, um, when you install your printer software, you may well get profiles for their papers installed. So my systems where I've done t t uh, testing are full of Epson profiles and Canon profiles that relate to specific printers and papers. In general, a profile for one printer won't work for another printer. There are exceptions, so the Epson P8500 uh, ET8500 I'm looking at here, the profiles for this are the same as for the 8550. Likewise with the Epson P700, the profiles work for the P900 and vice versa. So that can make things a bit simpler. It does mean that if you want to know more about this, I haven't finished the review of this one yet, if you want to know more about this one, look at my 8550 review, because most of my 8550 review will be relevant to this printer as well, because inside they are essentially the same things, but different sizes. Now. These data files, think of them as translation guides so that you can go from the colours in your file to the colours on your print. The colours you're seeing here are RGB colours. Now, printers themselves, um, although they use CMYK 
cyan, magenta, yellow, black inks and mixtures thereof. Although they use them, they are treated as RGB devices. So, you know, a printer is an RGB device, it uses three colors. So the gist of that is don't use CMYK. For, you know, photographers should have no reason to ever go near CMYK unless they have specific reasons to do so. I've got a video about this one uh, just called Say No to CMYK, um, which goes into the details of that. That's got some stuff. I'll put links to some of these more in, in, in the details. But anyway, these little translation files, what are they doing? Well, this is a profiling target. And this is what you use to make that data file. Or I should say the software does it. You just read this. How does it work? The principle of how this works actually gives you a good idea what the profiles are doing. The software has a load of colors that it knows the values of. And here's a bigger profiling target on a different type of paper. Now, the software knows what the colors should be. It knows what colors it's sending to the printer. You then measure this target and you measure the colors with respect to photometer. Now, thousands on these, I've got one that scans, so it makes it quite easy to make profiles. So I have the software and the scan and the scanning spec photometer um, and it reads the values of all of these colored patches you notice there are blacks and grays as well as bright colors so the idea is the software chucks out a whole range of different colors for the printer to have a go at printing the printer produces the profile the, the target here prints it out i then read that we now have two sets of information we know what the profiling software thinks it sent to the printer and we know what the measured results of what came out of the printer. The two are not the same. And the fact that they're not the same is what is handled by the profile. As I say, think of it as a sort of translation document that goes from your image data, your colors in your photo, through to what the printer can manage. If, for example, things come out, the printer prints a little bit too green, then the profiling colors will be measured. The profiling software will correct for that error and pull the colors back to where they are. There is a limit to what you can do with profiles. Sometimes some papers simply don't work with some printers. If you have a paper that doesn't work with your printer and you're adjusting it and you've tried all the settings, then it's very possible that your printer and that paper just aren't compatible together. I come across it all the time. It's not that obvious these days, but sometimes you will get papers and printers that just don't work well together. Accept it, move on, pick another paper. That is why you always pick your papers after you pick your printer. Um, or if you have a specific paper that you need to print on, you do your printer research very carefully to find out that your printer will work well on that particular one. So there we've got screen colors, print colors, and all you really need to do is when you're printing, use the profile. How do you use the profile? Well, you either select it in the software or it can be automatically selected. Um, I've got, if you look in any of the printer reviews I've done, you'll see where I'm using profiles in it. Um, they're installed on your system, so your software should know they're there. There's nothing more you need to do. Um, it's all handled for you. And that's the whole idea of it. And that's the nice bit about the color management, that when it's working well, you shouldn't even notice it's there. Right. Now, we've got our translations here and we're producing this. Is that it? Well, not quite. The range of colors that your printer and paper can produce is a different range of colors to what your screen can display. And in fact, there is a profile as well that works for the, uh, for the screen. That's calibrating and profiling your screen because your camera may have captured infinite color that the screen can't display, but the printer can print. Your camera may have captured color that it's easy to show on a screen, but the printer can't manage. It's because these mismatches that the translation documents of the profiles, that's where they come in and that's what they do. They effectively, they ideally make everything work well together. So this screen here is different to this screen here. I've set them up differently. They've got, in the computers, there is a monitor profile 
same sort of thing as a printer profile, and that's handling the monitor characteristics in the same way that the printer profile handles the paper, ink, printer pro characteristics together. They're all of a match. Now, what about the fact that they don't match? Well, it means sometimes, and this particular image here is one, um, these colours here, some of these dark greens and things, can be tricky for some printers to manage, some printers and papers to manage. Different papers have different gamuts. Gamut is the range of colours that it can manage. Now, when you print a glossy print, it looks different to a matte art paper print. The range of colours that work on them may be different. So you also, you may get colours on this particular image here, and remember this is the image as seen through the, uh, through the monitor profile. This is what's called a large gamut screen. This is just an ordinary uh, sRGB style screen, uh, a smaller colour space, a smaller gamut. So I use ones like this for editing, not ones like that. So I'm pretty, there may be colours here, particularly dark browns, dark greens, that really don't print that well on some papers. Um, and that's a limitation of printing. You think, well, what, have I, what am I going to do here? Um, I've got stuff, I've got ways of getting accurate printing, good looking prints, hopefully, from my images. But it all seems a little bit hit and miss. It is in many respects. Part of good of printing skills comes from experience and knowing what different types of images look like. Um, now I've got test images and things I use for this that actually are specifically made to show issues with papers, inks, printers and things. So they'll be completely different, for example, on this luster paper to this matte paper. This particular, this is an etching paper, so this is a rough surface paper, so it's different for that. So I've got these, and this is where soft proofing comes in. Remember I said that the profiles are like a translation document from your image data, colours, to what the printer can manage. Turns out there is a second translation table that goes back the other way. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of what the different tables really mean, but think of it as one table is the one that's used during printing. It goes from your image to the printer. But there is another set of data which allows you to go from the printer data back through to the image data. Now, this is used to actually show you what a print will look like. Now you can use soft proofing in some software packages and the idea is it uses that reverse channel to simulate on the screen what your print is going to look like. Now there are a few issues with this. It can really help if you understand how to use it. But if you just habitually use soft proofing to try and adjust things, it won't work terribly well or you're likely to be disappointed. And why? Because Remember I said the print the range of colours the printer can manage are not the same as what the screen can manage and vice versa. And if you add into the mix what your camera can capture, which is a very wide range of colours, then you can see there are potential errors in it. So what it means with soft proofing is use it as a guide. It will give you an indication of potential problem areas. I've got so I've got lots more detailed things on these if you really want to f you know, follow it up. But think of soft proofing as giving you a rough guide. It doesn't, if you haven't calibrated your monitor, it's not much help. Soft proofing on an uncalibrated monitor is e even more useless. Um, it's just not going to be much of a help because remember these, these translation, these profiles, they govern the movement of data between different things. So display on the screen, display on this screen, the printer, whatever. So actually looking at all of how they work together is quite important. So soft proofing can help, but you need a calibrated screen and you need it at the right brightness. Now, I've deliberately set these screens to quite a low color temperature to match the lighting in here for the prints. So hopefully when you see prints, um, in here and in the videos, they match fairly closely. So there's a print there, there's a different, another print of it. Um, I've set that up quite deliberately to do it. Now, that is about as far as I really want to go in it. Because if I 
go further, I start getting overly technical. Now, I'm, I'm sorry for those of you who think that this is overly technical already, but it could get a lot worse. Um, if you're curious about stuff, if it hasn't explained it, please do let me know in the comments if you've got questions, because it is people's questions that basically give me an idea of what to cover in many of these little videos. Um, so there you have it, printer profiles. They help you make better looking prints. Mm, and that's the key element of why you use them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and um, thank you.